So what I'm expecting once I've bonded with the dog and built a good relationship with the dog is the problems that the owner is seeing to start to show their face. Okay, so it's very important you build that clear, that that strong relationship with the dog, so the dog feels comfortable enough to actually show you its it, it, its issues essentially. So you can see the dog is 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 starting to regulate itself better, and its energy is starting to stabilise. Its tail's not tucking so much, and it's it's taking in information correctly. Whereas when it first came in, it was quite defensive, caged up, tail low, and 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 not sniffing as much. Whereas now it looks a little bit more fluent, and that's kind of what I'm looking for is that fluent energy. So we've got a um, Leonberg here and um, she has come to me for some training. Uh, the owner's had some issues with her around a lot of defensive behaviour. So a lot of the issues are based off the dog's um, defensive drive. So defensive drive is essentially the dog's want to defend itself or defend things it sees as a resource. Um, it can be seen in a number of different uh, situations in different environments and different scenarios. So we've got a dog that's quite defensive, which is typical for the breed, and it does have a, it is quite insecure in new situations. So the the uncertainty in new situations can be caused from a number of different um, elements. Again, so it could be you know the owner's communication with the animal. It can be the lack of socialisation at a young age. It can be. Um, a negative experience potentially. A, a number of things could cause the dog to be uncertain when it goes into new situations. So we've got a dog with a high defense drive, um, low confidence, uncertainty, and causing the dog to um, react in situations where it feels threatened and it doesn't feel like somebody else is gonna take the reins or take control in, the in, in, in that situation. So. In terms of why this has happened or what's gone wrong, so uh, the, the owner has been seeing a few different trainers. What sometimes happens when you see a few different trainers is you, you run a few different communication systems. So you're running, one trainer tells you one thing, another trainer tells you something that completely contradicts what the other trainer said. So you end up trialing heaps of different things, causing a lot of confusion in the animal, which can cause the dog to feel uncertain. It can cause the dog to be insecure because the, the communication isn't effective. If you are going through a trainer, make sure they have a step-by-step -step program to get you to your end results. So if your end result is to have the dog loose leash walking down, uh, down the street, make sure they have a system that's going to work for you. Okay, it's no good them doing it themselves and they being able to walk the dog. They need to be able to transfer that training to you and get the same results for you. Okay, so that is, that is um, very important that they understand that that is a massive part, if not 60% of the training. A lot of the time, most trainers are really, really good and they know how to train the animal, but sometimes conveying that information and getting that across to the owner and getting them to understand it can be the tricky bit. So that's what we're gonna um, attempt to do here in this video. So the steps I'm gonna take with this dog, uh, first is gonna be taking him out into new environments. So we're gonna go into a couple of new environments, um, wander around and um, let her take in a whole heap of different information. And the reason for that is it's gonna build confidence. So I'm not gonna actually try train the dog yet. I wanna bond with the dog. I wanna see how the dog's responding to new situations and um, monitor that because the dog's had so much different types of training. What I'm expecting as I start training the dog is a lot of different responses. So I'm expecting a little bit of confusion in certain situations, I need to recondition the collar potentially, I need to see how the dog responds to physical pressure, uh, there's a number of different things I'm going to have to work the dog through and potentially recondition in order to create a very clear effective communication system for the animal. So what I'm expecting once I've bonded with the dog and built a good relationship with the dog is the problems that the owner is seeing to start to show their face. Okay, so it's very important you build that clear, that that strong relationship with the dog, so the dog feels comfortable enough to actually show you its it, it, its issues essentially. So uh, I'm going to start that process now of the, the the bonding process. And the first thing I'd always do is I start to give the dog a little bit of affection. I see how the dog deals with it. So what what happens a lot of the time with these um protective dogs or these dogs that are quite defensive is when you pat them they kind of cling into you so they hug into your space they cut you off they're always facing out from you their ears kind of go forward and they become alert at different situations their tail kind of tucks down it might even drop below their uh, in between their legs and that's a good sign the dog's very uncertain or in a very defensive state so this body posture here is what i would say probably a four out of ten or a three out of ten um, defensive state let's say so it's 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 relatively defensive um 
The good signs we are seeing though is, is she's sniffing a lot. So there's a lot of sniffing going along, a lot of good information being taken in. And as we walk around and we start to kind of see how the dog's responding to different environments and different situations, is we're gonna see the dog from going from the sniffing state to ears forward, mouth shut, defensive. And, and, and it's gonna start to use its eyes a lot. And when that starts to happen, uh, that's generally when we're gonna get the reactivity out of the dog. So we're gonna go for a little bit of a wander and just see how, how she responds to this environment. Obviously it's a very quiet environment we're out in the country we're on a bit of a, um, a block of land here so we're, we it's 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 going to be a very good way for me to build trust with the dog without too much going on so this this is this is the perfect environment to start let's go so I'm gonna wander around let her have a bit of a have a bit of a nosy so an important thing to note is I'm never gonna um, I'm never gonna let the dog dictate where we're going again. So as I'm walking around, I'm not just gonna let her drag me off somewhere. I'm I'm gonna stay in um, relatively in control, but I am giving her that freedom again on the leash. She's actually caged up straight away, so I've walked onto the grass and she doesn't actually want to walk. Uh, so she's actually in a, an uncertain state right now. So she's uncertain. She, she she's not too sure what to do, and I'm gonna apply a little bit of leash pressure. Come on, miss putting her heels in a wee bit, come on, good. And then she kind of breaks through and watch her tail lift. So she went from an uncertain state to me pushing her through that boundary, okay? So what happens a lot of the time is the dog gets uncertain, we then go, oh, I feel sorry for the dog and we go give the dog a bit of affection and we actually communicate the wrong thing, okay? So you already communicate with affection. You're actually, in our mind, we're saying, um, oh, it's okay, you're okay, you can walk on the grass. However, in the dog's mind, we're actually saying, you're doing the right thing, continue to do it. So by me giving that little bit of leash guidance and forcing the dog a little bit to work through that, that changes the dog's head space. So you can see instantly the dog's body posture changed because I'm making the dog overcome things on its own. Come on. Nice, confident body posture, I like to see that. And she's doing really well, she's having a good sniff. It may be the other dog's scent on the ground that she's actually caging up at. Come on. conditioning with the dog and they've done some training however um oh so she's just gone toilet um the the dog going toilet is actually a good sign for me that she's starting to really relax so generally when a dog is in a very um uncertain state they cage up and they don't feel actually confident enough to go toilet um and and because they're so defensive so now that she's kind of starting to build confidence and 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 kind of open up a little bit when i say open up her body posture open up she she's now feeling confident enough to go to go to the loo so so that's a really good sign to me that she's starting to build confidence straight away. So just before we were walking up this fence line there and she gave a little bit of a jump so she kind of randomly moved and that was like a, um, an unnatural response to me. So that could be caused from the way the, um, the, the previous trainer or the owner's been utilizing the remote collar. Uh, so we've had you know a random reaction um, which can happen very, very easily with e-collar training if, if you don't know how to overcome these little problems as they arise. So. I'm going to keep my eye on little things like that, these unnatural responses as they come up. Come on, we're going to go for another wander. So you can see once again her body posture's changed drastically and she's in a very confident state now. Becoming a little bit uncertain here, so she drops her head down, her tail's dropped a wee bit and she's kind of become a little bit more apprehensive as we've come up to the gate. So what I'm seeing is a lot of uncertainty around new objects. So this is definitely a sign that she's been buzzed at the wrong time on a remote collar. It's not always the remote collar that's done this. It can sometime, sometimes also be, you know, a genetic predisposition. So sometimes dogs have a, they have a, what we call a high fear genetic, and that high fear genetic can, um, is common in some dogs, and it could be a, the matter of the dog it does have a high fear genetic. It's got slightly um, softer genetics, which make it more prone to having these little fear reactions, which is, which is not a problem. It just means we have, we have a little, we're fighting genetics a little bit. And so this is one of the processes, like I said, I do with dogs. I take them out for a bit of a wander. I let them go toilet and walk them around for about 10 to 15 minutes and make sure they're really comfortable with the environment before we start trying to do any training. I'm 
I'm constantly monitoring her body posture. So again, her tail's dropped, her head's dropped to the ground. She's now starting to track a wee bit. So I'm thinking, are you going into predatory or are you still uncertain? To me, she still looks a bit uncertain. She's just kind of taking in the environment again. So as I'm walking around, I'll just be monitoring her body posture constantly and see if anything changes in the environment that has an effect on her body posture. Because that body posture kind of tells me where her head's at. So you can always kind of correlate what her, is going on with her, what you're seeing with the dog, to what's happening in their brain. So a very kind of easy way to explain this is, say you have a scale 10, 5, 0. 5 being stable, balanced. 0 being scared, tail tucked. 10 being overconfident very stiff, leaning into the lead, tail stiff in the air. Um, that kind of gives you a bit of a scale. So I'm constantly kind of putting that dog on that scale as I'm walking around and gauging where the dog is at. When things happen in the environment, um, I, I'll also see how the dog responds. So there are noises triggered the dog, so the barking, the dog has gone into that defensive state again. Mouth shut, ears forward, uncertain, okay? Here, I want the dog to process. So I want to let the dog try figure it out and I want to see how the dog responds to this because it's, it's gone into an uncertain state. My movement instantly centered into eating grass. Did you see that? So all I did was move around behind the dog and all of a sudden the dog started eating grass again. So the dog went from a defensive state to an avoidant state. Okay, so that tells me that somewhere along the line the, the, the communication has been inconsistent, it hasn't quite achieved the desired response, but the dog has gone into a, um, it has snapped out of the, the distraction, which is good. And then we start to sniff again. So you see that? So the dog triggers something, uh, something triggers the dog, the dog ears go forward, it goes uncertain, and then it um, snapped out of it, went into avoidance, and then circled and started to sniff. So that's the process the dog will go through every single time it goes from a reactive state to a non-reactive state, okay? And I've just got to work the dog through that repetitively until the dog stops having those reactions. So when the dog was actually processing there and it was trying to figure out what was going on, if I was to nick it on the collar, um, the dog just shuts off. So it will just stop taking in information. It then just causes the dog to not actually overcome the problem. We're just shutting the dog down. We're suppressing the dog. I don't want to suppress the dog. I want the dog to learn how to control its own instincts. And the, remember, the e-collar is only a communication tool. It's not something that it's, it, we can use it for corrections in certain situations, but a lot of the time it's used as a, as a communication tool. And you can see again the dog's body posture is changing again, getting confident, pulling into the lead. This is actually what I want to see is that, that, that forward energy because that's easy to work with. That uncertain shut down energy is very hard to work with, very easy to make mistakes. And then we move on again. So you can see that body posture is balanced out again. That's, that's nice. That's what I want to see. So there another switch happened, took in some form of scent. Energy dropped a little bit for a second, and then it's kind of come back to a stable state again. So you can see the dog is, is, is starting to regulate itself better, and its energy is starting to stabilize. Its tail's not tucking so much, and it's, it's taking in information correctly. Whereas when it first came in, it was quite defensive, caged up, tail low, and, 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 and not sniffing as much. Whereas now it looks a little bit more fluent, and that's kind of what I'm looking for is that fluent energy.